everybody, this is the Hey You Video Game Podcast. This is Lemon Smith, Gimmick, and Bridget. And we're stoked for this episode because we have our very first person ever to interview. Oh boy. Oh boy! He's so cool. He's so cool. Uh, what's his name? Oh my god. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Oh we just god. spent two hours talking with him. Oh. His name's Colonel Twerkins. Of the Broham Nation. And he is an emissary for Escape from Tarkov. And um, we're pumped because he's going to give us some insight behind the scenes, uh, thoughts and perspectives and info yeah. on the game. Follow him on uh, uh, YouTube. It's All of his monikers are the Broham Nation. B-R-O-H-A-M. Broham. The Broham Nation. He does a lot of Tarkov stuff. Uh, like Lemon said, he's an emissary. That essentially means he's kind of like a representative. He gets a uh, more. In- he's not a developer, but he gets a little more kind of. Uh, he helps promote the escape from Tarkov. He basically mm-hmm. knows everything about Tarkov and everything about Battlestate games. And he's my dad. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, yes. and when you search him on Twitter, <laughs> make sure you put the. That's not true. Broham Nation, because Broham Nation is something with like bikini. Like it's a Twitter. Thing with like bikini models, or we're no. not trying to say you need a bikini model. Yeah. The bro, yeah, Twitter, it's at the Broham Nation. And the Broham Nation. Nation. And yeah. we also wanted to shamelessly plug ourselves. If you're not following us on YouTube, hit that subscribe. The hey, link will be in the show game. notes. Yep, we're we're not cool enough yet to have our custom URL, but uh, if you go to heyyouvideogame.com, you can uh, get links to our Twitter. Our YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Lemon Smith is posting hot blogs all the time. All the hottest. Yeah, we're really pushing that LinkedIn. Yeah, get LinkedIn. It, get on there. Yeah, in fact, we're actually closing down the podcast, the YouTube channel, Twitch, everything. We're going full uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Full LinkedIn. We're gonna try to get big on LinkedIn. We're gonna push it. We're it's gonna, huge. Uh, I mean, it's and it's only getting bigger. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, CEOs get on there. So if you want to be a CEO, yeah, absolutely. Which is what we got to know for. a CEO to be a CEO, right? That's how That's it works. Right. Yeah. That's how. It I works. mean, this is America. Yeah. That's so, how it works. Without further ado. Yeah, boy. We have Colonel Twerkins. The endless well of knowledge. Transition. Today we have a special guest, uh, Twerkins of uh, Broham Nation, the uh, YouTube yeah, boy. channel. Also a fellow uh, The Art of War uh, member with me. So we've got him on today. Oh boy, what a what a yeah. passionate introduction! You should be you should be you should host some stuff. Why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Colonel Torkins? Um, a little bit about maybe your background with Escape from Tarkov and some of the other games that uh, you mod for. Yeah, no problem. Just uh, want to let you know up front, I do have uh, issues with asthma, and I have like throat damage from when I was younger, so. If you hear me have to cough, clear my throat or whatever, that's that's the reason why. Uh, my I go by Colonel Twerkins, uh, Twerks, Twerkins, you know, whichever way you want to do it. Um, I'm actually I started off doing uh, gameplay videos for Contract Wars. This was back in t- uh, 2015, and then um, in October of 2015 they announced or rather they started to give us these clues about some project that they wanted to tell us about but they were being real like uh cryptic about it to the point that they even gave us a website to go to and it had you know people found out that there was code in the in the actual page the home page and they started to try to decode it it was um cryptographs and or cryptograms or however you say it. And so, um, you know, I kept making Contract Wars videos and then the game got announced to the Contract Wars community. And I already had an understanding of the the lore and, you know, where everything was up until that point. And then once I saw the, what it was, and then the first announcement video, I just 
went headfirst into it and I was like, man, I want to support this game. So I bought the Edge of Darkness edition and um, then I became a moderator. And this was in August of 2016 when the alpha was given to us, the first build, first patch. Yep. And um, I've been playing ever since. Um, I know a lot about the games, both of them. And now Hired Ops, which is a new <clears throat> title under Absolute Soft, which is another of the companies of Battlestate Games. And I know there's probably going to be some people that'll be like, no, it's not. But it's actually in one of their interviews. And they said it's still currently one of their other companies. Oh, but wow. um, I then became an emissary as well as a moderator. And so kind of just been at it for over a year uh, with BSG. And just what does that exactly mean being an emissary? Well, you predated, didn't you predate the emissary program? Like you were a moderator. Uh, yes, I did because I was a moderator before program. before yeah. the emissary program, right? Yeah. Um, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I lost track. Well, I was just I was just a little curious because I've seen the emissary program. I've gone on like or you know the emissaries on the forums, but I wasn't even sure really what that even meant. Like I know oh, what an emissary is okay. in real life, but uh, through this, you know, escape to, from Tarkov, I was a little confused. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing as, a, uh, you know, what you would know as an emissary. Uh, basically, we are someone who comes to represent the game and the, the community and BSG and to serve as sort of a bridge in that, um, uh, in that way. And that is something that <clears throat> allows us to do things like hold contests, um, create Facebook pages based on if you are like, let, for example, I'm in the U.S., so I don't, I didn't set up one, but one of our USA emissaries did, so I helped to moderate that one. But we've got people, you know, in different places, Hong Kong and and uh, Por um, Portugal, and you know, so they all have their own Facebook pages, right? So right. they work on promoting the game. Uh, we had. I, I believe it was two emissaries that went to Gamescom. Uh, so they set up uh, their own little thing. As a matter of fact, they've got, they set up, they're setting up something at another gaming convention. I lost track of it in my head right now, but, uh, but one of them was definitely at uh, Gamescom and uh, they got to meet Nikita and the whole team. And uh, you know, so that's kind of what, what we do, you know, we're, out to sort of um, help to foster a good community for the game, you know, to answer questions, you know, to sort of be an authority on, on the right. game. Yeah. It, it kind of brings up an interesting topic in the development of Tarkov because uh, uh, when, 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 when did the, the emissary program started it at the, when alpha started, right. But they never really ramped it up until a few months ago. Am I correct in that? I'm sorry, repeat the question again? The emissary program. When, when did the emissary program start? Ooh, um, I want to say maybe... I want to say like like in springtime. Like during... let, me, let me look it up. Let me look it up. Hold yeah. On. Yeah, I know the... Uh, well, while you look that up, I know that, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit too, that um, one of the big reasons the price this is what I heard at least one of the reasons the price was so high in the in the alpha uh, was because they were, they really didn't want the floods coming in to the game yet. They didn't really want too much publicity before they felt like the game was in a spot where they can get it. So is that, is that kind of what you're get, getting at that? Like maybe the emissary program is, is, and I guess he'll tell us in a second here, but it's fairly new because. Yeah, it was started in October. Uh, well, it was announced that they were going to be doing it. Yeah, and then they probably yeah, they're introducing they it. They implemented in it. Yeah, they and then they implemented it in like you know probably December, but they only had a few emissaries. But they've started. They've grown it a lot. The emissary program has gotten a lot bigger, and it's kind of an important program because I think uh, one of the big complaints about Tarkov is that Battle State does not have good communication with its community. This English community, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they're all they all speak Russian, 
And it, they already have a PR model that's pretty reserved. They have a very conservative PR model. I mean, what they kept Tarkov itself a secret for two years. This huge, it was this, you know, hu- yeah. huge. Was that program. that website that uh, you were talking about originally, Twerkins? Yeah, they 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 started development. I believe it was like late 2011, early 2012, and they did not. It was three years that they didn't say. Like they didn't tell anyone outside of their own little group, you know, um, yeah. you know, outside of the the team. Well, they've so. had this. They, they've had this super conservative PR model, and it worked great because when they did finally drop that original trailer, it was like mind blowing. Like it was like, oh, oh my yeah, god! I remember when I first it's, saw it. It was like, got, oh, the perfect game just just yeah. got announced. It's like, oh, where did this come from? And like people were reporting on it. Like, uh, what is this? Like this is. And I I looked at it the other day. It's got like millions of views. Like I think of Tarkov as a pretty niche game, but like there. I think when it first got announced, and it, it, I mean, you can kind of uh, maybe speak a little bit on this, Torkins, about it, how, like how it's been received. But I think when it first got announced, I I I mean, I'm kind of a survival game junkie to begin with, but I felt like I was seeing it on main like IGN. I was yeah. seeing it all over the place because I remember I, I like it was everywhere, and I thought it was like right around the corner and then i realized it it wasn't but uh yeah wh- wh- how right. the how has the reception been um you were there like you were launch. you were in the belly of the beast at that um, time yeah basically the thing okay first thing you got to understand is that the devs said right away that they knew that they were making a niche game and that they actually did not they were shooting for a small audience. They weren't trying to go for a wide audience and they were looking for uh 30 plus in age group. You know, that was yeah, the demographic oh, really? that they wanted. Yeah. I can see they, that. they weren't, they weren't really going for a younger crowd because they knew, first of all, the game is going to be 18 plus. Right. Whereas the forums, are public because anyone can access them. That's why, you know, the rules are different than in game, unless you get kind of out of hand in global chat or whatever. But, um, but for the most part, it's the, the game itself was just meant for a, um, I would say it, it was, it's more of a connoisseur game. Yeah. It, does that make sense? Like it's, it's a game where, People who who played uh, Stalker, Metro, you know, all of these games. Because, like, my history with games in general is not very much. It was a point in time I stayed with my father for, like, four years. So I missed out on, like, you know, most of Nintendo, Sega, RPGs, RTS, uh, you know, Doom, all of that, right? So um, I I wasn't, I didn't really catch a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? So those people who experience that, you know, a lot of those things, those classic ones, um, I'm just now, you know, going like almost halfway through Last Light. You know, um, I already finished 2033. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I been, I did it on Ranger Hardcore. Like I did it all the, the hardest I could, you know? You were going for it. <laughs> Right, exactly. So, you know, those people who really enjoy that type of of game and really wanted to see something, you know, that was trying to be as realistic as possible with obviously balancing the fact that it's still a game, you know, and some things, you know, poetic license, as they say. Um, So they weren't expecting all of that, you know. And But I think one of the things that they may have underestimated was the need for it. Yeah. Right. And those and people who didn't know that they wanted it. Yeah, for sure. You know, and people who had been playing what they consider were hardcore games, you know, they're finding out that this is an this is hardcore. You know, it's not like what they thought was really hardcore, you know. Um, so the uh, the game just kind of started to take off you know the videos word of mouth spread and you know we saw a small amount of people right then the form died down a little bit because we were still waiting on alpha then we finally got it and then the, the, the forms just were popping all the time right so then you know from there 
we introduced um, the lift of the NDA for certain people, YouTubers, streamers, etc. And <clears throat> at that point, then you have people like Frankie on PC and, you know, uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Gosh, I can't um, man, my bad. Um, Cy Syndicate, is that his name? He, he was, you know, promoting the game and Lyric and all these other people. So uh, it just kind of went crazy because, you know, all people saw was what the the gameplay from the test build, which is what we're doing now, they saw that and then they just, you know, oh, I want that, you know? And then yeah. when they started to see that there was things that they didn't understand, like for example, the AI or spawn killing or capping spawns, etc., they kind of started to say, well, no, I think this is like not right, you know, something's wrong here and trying to make suggestions to change those things, not realizing that we were still missing two core features, which is the story mode and the quest. Those are the two main things, especially the story mode, that are going to change the game. And so you have some people, a group of people who, because they didn't research it, they're on one side, right? And then you got another group that's on another side. But I've seen it all from the beginning, you know, and just watched it, <laughs> yeah. watched it grow and and become its own thing, and more people talking about it, uh, articles upon articles, and you know people having high hopes for the game. So I've I've, I've seen it, I've seen it all, man. It's it's crazy. It's become it's become very very complicated at this point. It's because it started out as this pure vision, like you said. This is like a game for game developers. It's almost like I think of like uh, like Louis C.K. Louis C.K. was Louis. A, he was a comedian's comedian, and for a long time he wasn't popular. But then at a certain point he got he blew up. He became huge because whatever it was, I don't know our generation or something, but we had this desire for this kind of like artistic purity, and I think that's what Tarkov has. It's it's a game made for the developers. I mean, I know uh, that's a that's a very. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, but that's a. I was going to mention that, and I'm glad you reminded me. Um, this is this is the thing, and I and I need to say this because I want people who listen to this that may be uh, doubting or you know the naysayers, etc. They, you know, there's people that will say, oh, the game's never going to come out or they're lying to us or whatever. But just because of that, like you mentioned, conservative PR, right? And conservative um, reporting of everything, right? Which I'll explain in, in a minute. But, um, you know, they, they wanted, uh, this is their game. Like, this is their baby. This is, this is something that they want to play. Right, like yeah, more, after, even yeah. even more so than us. So they want this game to succeed and be something, so that they'll have something to play that they've always wanted to play. That's why it's correct when you say that it's a game for developers for them. You know. Well, yeah, do that, you think as like it gets bigger and bigger and bigger that they might be influenced by the community? Like if it gets big enough and the community is like, you know what, we really want you to change this. Do you think they would crack, or would you say for the most part they've just stayed they solid? They take gun requests, like they're they're like they're since yeah, the but that, that's well, right, yeah. That, that's a, that's kind of a different thing, you know. Um, they won't take division. every they don't take yeah. every gun request simply because yeah. of the fact that it, it may not fit in with the story. You know, those types of guns just may not be available because of the where we are in the city and because it's locked down and only so many things can get in and out. Yeah. But as far as the guns go, I would tell you that if you uh you know were trying to figure out what they're gonna put in the game, I would give a very good bet, and this is just my personal opinion, that everything that they did in contract wars, uh all the way through to hired ops as far as the guns that they've uh implemented, that those guns will all make it into the game. Yeah. That's just so, my like, personal. Go belief. back to uh so Lemon's question. I kind of derailed Lemon's. Yeah, question. yeah, yeah. 
You, I, but basically, what, what you're asking is, uh, will they dumb down this pure vision? Like, as well, here, grows, here's maybe not dumb it down. No, but yeah, definitely. I think what he, I think, I think what, what, okay. I want to get to the root of that question, though, right? Because you brought it up for a reason. So, what, what, why, what was the motivation behind it? Like, as far as like, well, what made you think of that? I mean, you go on Reddit or the forums or different things, and I think sometimes people are saying, "Hey, I want a refund because uh, it's too difficult, or it's clunky with reloading, or just different mechanics that are like." part of this game and what make it unique but you've got you know people who are familiar with like battlefield or call of duty who come into this and they're like what there's like it's the the the, it's too steep of a learning curve you know and so do you think that the devs might think well maybe we'll take out some of these mechanics and we'll reach a bigger audience it won't be exactly what we initially started with um if they prove me wrong they prove me wrong but knowing them I I highly highly doubt that. I, I could almost tell you that that's not ever going to happen. And they may a good thing. Oh, they yeah. may well, I'm add for in, lasers. Like listen, lasers, they, attack oh, yeah. dogs, yeah. Star you know, Wars weapons. That's the thing. Oh, They've man. mentioned that that that's, uh, we'll, it's possible that we'll see packs of wild dogs. Uh, but <clears throat> that would be, that would be <laughs> right. So good. Well, that's you know that's why you got me here because I do know quite a few already, things. Already an already tense yeah. game. We were talking Imagine about right. packs of we're dogs. We're talking about mutant babies. Right, God. right. Night. If you look in in some of the art that's been done, right, part of the art for EFT. And actually, some of the art for uh, Russia 2028, which is the next title, and incidentally is the name of the universe that Contract Wars, Hired Ops, and EFT all reside in. Um, there are, it's like sort of like a huge flea market, which we're going to have a flea market, right? Yep. And there's like, you can see people with dogs on leashes. I think they're like guards or something like that, you know, walking around. So... <clears throat> It's been a while since I've seen that picture, but, you know, and then they mentioned that. So, yeah, it's out there in the ether, ready to become something eventually. But um, here's the thing about that. Let's go back to what they said. It's not made for a white audience. They're not here to make anything that anyone's used to or like there may be some inspiration for sure from certain games like the ones I mentioned. But... but that's where it stops. Everything here, like, for example, the story in this game is not going to have anything to do with, uh, you know, monsters, aliens, uh, zombies, mutants, none of that. It has nothing to do with that. It is really... I don't know. I'm holding no, up for no, it's, maybe. No, it's, no, it's not. It's not at all. 100% not. <laughs> the God. reason is because they're... They, remember, they want to go for realism, right? So they're just going to give you... An actual, like if you were watching one of those thriller type movies where, you know, a political thriller, that's basically the the way that the storyline is going to go. Like, I don't know the exact answer because that's under wraps, but from things that I know about the lore, about the storyline, uh, pieces that we do have, it's just going to kind of have that sort of, um, of a thing, you know, like... Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched Pit, uh, Prison Break. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you remember Season the company? One was that epic? Remember the company? Yep. Yep. Right. Okay. Well, kind of my theory because of what I'm, you know, reading and hearing and then watching that show, I kind of think Terror Group is like the company. Yeah. You know, so just it's going to be that type of a thing. You know what I mean? That type of a storyline. It's not going to be really fantasy or fantastical, you know, sci-fi, any of that type of stuff. Yeah, we, you know? I mean, we have enough of that. I feel like the survival genre, I, you know, that's probably one of the reasons this game got unexpectedly popular. Is I think when they started development, the survival genre was still very niche. And then the survival genre has been, and I, we, we've been playing survival you know, obscure survival games forever, and I think people are starting to get are starting to get uh, get the the bug. You know, yeah. But I, I that uh, you know the monsters, the zombies, all that stuff has been overdone. I th- I think that's to Tarkov's credit that we need a survival game that doesn't have zombies in it. 
<laughs> or, yeah. or whatever. Right, right. But uh, but but that's actually a good a good kind of uh, bridge point in that the game as it is right now, I, like I'm addicted to. It's just I've. I can't count. I mean, it's not on Steam, so I can't really count how many hours I've put into it. But it's a lot <laughs> right, of right. fucking it's, hours. It's in the interface. You can check it. Oh, I gotta check it. Yeah. Is it? Does it? Does I it have, carry like, over from wipes? We, we were comparing. No, it doesn't. Oh. Oh. Remember on wipes, Saturday, right? Twerkins, we were comparing hours. I forget what I had, but I had more than anybody. I well, I'm higher level than you, so I'm probably. Yeah. Well, we we had a group. We had shot. a group within Tall, uh, like a group of, of guys that we we played from the moment that they. Came gave us online um, until like, oh gosh, I want to say like maybe three months ago, four months ago, we we had been playing like almost seven days a week, every yeah. evening, you know, we've been, we had been playing since online first started, since the servers were on St. Be- Petersburg time and us being in, in North America, you know, joining in on us servers we're having to play at night every day yeah wow. like we played at night every night you know with and without night vision you know so <clears throat> that i mean it, and it was it was different then too because you know there was the thing where you go prone and you get back up but on their client, they can't see that you've gotten up. You're just sliding across the floor. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so imagine the yeah. whole a whole team do does that. The, imagine there's a whole team that does that, and it's nighttime. The slithering. <laughs> and yeah, and you can't see each other. Like oh, that's so why guess. I say when people make all these complaints about bugs and, and glitches and things, like dude, it, it's nothing compared to what we had to begin with. I so mean, you, it was, the first time you logged into Tarkov was what August. 2016. August 4th. Mm-hmm. August 4th, 2016. 2016. I, I always thought, like, I always thought I was an OG Tarkov player. I was like, oh, yeah, I've been playing since de- December 2016. Yeah. But when I heard that, I was like, holy crap. Yeah, I think. Crap. Yeah, I, 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 and I remember it. I remember, you know, honestly, that's what this is one of those things that you're just not going to forget. So for me, it was August 4th, 2016. That was the very first day that we got, um, you know, got the client and it was, I believe like six, six thirty in the morning when I, when I actually started the download. Wow. And you also, so I got it in December and I tried to play for about a week and it took 15 minutes to an hour. You were lucky if you got into a server in 15 minutes between like December and February. And I couldn't take it. I quit for two months until they fixed it. But you didn't you say that you you actually kept playing like you would just sit in the yeah like because one hour queues. But see the thing is is that we didn't have like okay it happened but it didn't happen that much like there was plenty of times that I mean lots and lots of times and hours that you could get on I mean it wasn't huh. like that continuously it may have just been just every time that you try to get on it just happened to be like that yeah. but Pico. yes there were. Right. And there were, there were, yes, there were problems and issues because duh, it's a test, but you know, um, we experienced like the amount of like desync and all, all that that people talk about. We experienced way, way more desync in the beginning of online. Are you suffering right? from PTSD from it? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> like desync. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were saying that <laughs> Once a, a you... Tarkov account should come with a few free counseling sessions because it's so traumatic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was. I'm like, to me, it's not a big deal anymore because the desync doesn't happen that much. Not for me, it doesn't. Not for when we're running together. It, it's it's rare that you'll get it. Like as terrible as it used to be, you know, you couldn't even open the marked room without your hand get, getting glitched every single time that you had to get out. Yeah. You had to leave uh, because, because you couldn't, you couldn't change weapons. You couldn't do anything. Now, at least when you have the weapon in your hand, you can still shoot. You know, you may not be able to reload and all that when it does get that bad, but you can still shoot. You can actually do something, to defend yourself and get out. But uh, back then, you, and it was the whole group. So once that once you got desynced, like and you got glitched in your hand like that, 
we would go as soon as we'd enter into dorms. That's when the the desync would start happening. Oh. Yeah, you doors. Know. Doors were the big culprit, huh? Well, we I okay. So I heard I I popped into uh, Ta headquarters the other night because I needed a. Uh, I needed one of the mandatories excused, and I heard you guys talking because I kind of sat there and lurked for a second because uh, I didn't want to interrupt. I heard you talking about like some of the desync issues and like how there's uh, seams in the server, and uh, we we were figuring that out last night and a couple nights ago. Uh, like for example, like gimmick. I know you said you broke your legs in one location, and you had to like. When you came back on the server, it put you right back at that location. And then, like, we noticed uh, there are certain spots where, like, if you if you figure out where you desynced, if you, like... You want to go back to the source of it. Yeah. Right? Like, it, it, if something, if some glitch happens and you continue on and then you realize you're desynced, you should go back to where that glitch happened because that's probably where it started. And yeah. that helps it catch up. Well, recently, I don't know how many times that we have gotten when when we've gotten DC that every single time it goes, it writes itself. You know, it wasn't until a lot more people got on the server, right, and the engine got updated uh, that we started to it started to be where it, it, people had to reconnect. Yeah, right. Back in February, not not all the time though. Not all the time for, for us. The, like the but, but remember. With with this new engine, this is the thing, and Nikita said this himself, is that it people have to understand the process because when you update an engine like that and you're in the middle of, and you have to go to beta because if you don't, people are going to be upset, right? Yep, yep. So it, it, they had to just do it and, and just hope for the best. And so what ended up happening is that a lot of the bugs reached the server, and so it's these, you know, infinite loops and so <clears throat> now they have to figure they had to go through and figure out what it is and and deal with it you know and they've also been in the middle of recoding the game a good portion of the game because of the the engine switch i mean the update so there's things that had to be fixed you know that had to be redone basically oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. P- people need to understand it's a it's a beta for sure and I, and i i mean i've noticed um i think i started playing back in like february or so and you'd go into on factory. Birthday, I got to do it on your birthday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Verindi yeah, gifted me uh, uh, the uh, hundred forty dollar edition. <laughs> my a beautiful birthday. game. We oh, wouldn't man. be here today without him. I, and I'm glad he did a lot of money because on this game. I, I would. Everybody I would has a pay game. that man, a thousand man. times over. Uh, but uh, like, I remember that the, even the factory server would have like twenty people in the lobby, and now it's just like you can scroll down, and it's just there. There's so many more people. And so there's obviously going to be some some issues, which you know it's a beta, so they want us. It's a, it's stress testing, and the, and there's a part of right. it that it's. Right. I always go in. I go into a round, and you and I say this, and I never take my own advice, but you just say, you know, I'm on a mission to donate my gear to a player. I'm going to lose it. It's going to be gone. Somebody's going to be really happy. And you know, with and it. if I make it out. It's a, it's, and it's never as bad as I think it is. It's, it's always like one in one well, in fifteen rounds. You're a bad player though, so that's oh, I'm the just, thing. I'm terrible. That's yeah. the thing though. You guys, you know, lemon, you know, me, lemon gimmick. We play together a lot, but we're still essentially doing our own thing in a way. I, I, <laughs> I know when, what he's about to we're, say, <laughs> oh. dude. Ta, ta yep. is a different ball game. Like when I play with ta, like I think on. Saturday we played for like how many hours? Like we played for like like at least three hours, mm-hmm. and I didn't die once. Like it's playing with Ta. It's like almost easy mode sometimes. Like, yeah, crazy. that's why when people, you know, that's why it's hard when I hear people complaining. Right? When I hear them complain, most of the time they say, "Oh, I lost all my stuff," and <clears throat> so on and so forth. The first thing I think is you're playing solo. You know, or you're playing in just one, it's you and one other person, and you, neither one of you is playing tactically, which is the way the game was designed to be played, you know. So because of that, that's why your your ratio of, of losses is going to be so high, you know, whereas in tall, we have, you know, uh, it communications is like number one 
thing and, and you know, uh, communicating where you're going, when you arrive, et cetera, et cetera. And um, <clears throat> always making sure that you know where your team is and that you're acknowledging that you hear someone saying, I'm here, I'm there, whatever, you know, uh, copy Roger, whatever, negative, you know, whatever it takes. And then uh, developing tactics, you know, learning to sweep sectors, et cetera, to use uh, the, the USEC term, you know, um, doing those things, it's, it just, I don't, I mean, you know, I have more wins than I have losses when it comes to that. Like only time if I lose anything, it'll be to some sort of a, if it's a glitch or a bug, which honestly I have, I have, I have yet to like have a huge ratio of losing to desync or even to uh, the scavs, you know, uh, the 180 yeah. legend mythic, you know, thing. <clears throat> because because it, it, the thing is, is people are not paying attention to the scavs. I really believe that because um, I don't know if you guys know who Big Fry is. Uh, he, he had a, he's a streamer and he basically made, you know, EFT made him, you know, streaming that game. Right. So he did a clip and he went back even later in the stream to, to review it frame by frame. And he got shot by a scab that turned around on him. Right. The thing is he's at windows, right. And he's coming between those two tanks right there. Yeah. Um, and he comes between them and he's just walking, right. Just normal walking. And then he sees the scab. The scab didn't even turn around right away. It took him like a good two, three seconds to do it, you know, and then he just turned around because he was trying to get closer to him and he didn't slow down his footsteps. He didn't do anything. Yeah. And he was already too close, you know. I mean, I think it definitely happened. I mean, it definitely happens. Uh we don't know, like, you know, there's there's desync. Sometimes they just flick around like that. I get headshot with a PM all the way across the warehouse sometimes, and it's just like, oh my gosh, is that seriously happening? But it is true that when I play with Ta, like we just power through the desync. Like when we have a five man or a four man, like if there's desync, we're just like, all right, well, we're already super secure. Like we know our positions. And usually there's somebody in there who like actually knows the seams too. We'll backtrack through the seams and we'll get out and it'll be just fine. Because playing with Ta, it's just like, it's just a whole different world. But I love both play styles. I like playing with my friends and we play kind of freestyle. Like I love right, the freestyle right. play. Like when me gimmick and lemon are playing, it's just like, we're just, we're moving. Like we're moving across the map. We're moving fast. Some people are like sneaking and like, we're doing all kinds of different stuff and it's chaotic. We lose our gear more, uh, but it's also, it's really fun. Well, we, then, we've started bringing like, we're raining it in when when we're we raining, when we're, we're raining bringing lemonade. out like oh I got a, I got a fully modded one fifty three or I've got a fully modded AKS it's like and no helmet and a packa it's like cool but you realize that you're just one shot away from death no matter what gun you have now we're starting to <laughs> uh, you know we're 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 rich enough and we've been rich enough for a while but yeah. it's just. <laughs> It's so nerve wracking to bring out good gear. I'm gonna but tell now you we're something. doing helmets and M4s oh, and Twerkin's stuff. Got and, the, and we're uh, just Twerkin's sweeping got the, the floor. Twerkin's, you've got the uh, press pack, I, don't you? I, I'm going to tell you something, man. Get good. You know, uh, <laughs> because, oh, hey. because, hey, I can run in the group with, with no pack or with no helmet, you know. And 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 still make off like a bandit, you know. I love um, that. those are the best rounds. You go in with nothing. But but come that out. comes. But I could do that consistently, and but it's only because. And that's not. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying because of what he said. What uh, Rini said is that, uh, you know, it comes from the tactics. It comes from the communication and things like that. It comes from hey, uh, Jackalope back up, you know, fall back. Don't, don't just stand there. You know, you don't have that kind of gear on, let a geared guy at least come, come up and, you know, give you some support, you know, yeah, um, a, good, a good, a good team can definitely we, yeah. be, be, be huge. It's a different play style. It's a different play style. And I love both play styles, but I hadn't done, I, I was playing squad for a while. The, the tactical Milsim game squad, uh, yeah. you know, top plays that, 
So I, I was pretty into that, but I didn't have a good group to play with. But when I joined Ta, I was like, I realized how much I love that, that like really uh, tactical style of yeah. play. I was just blown away with it. I mean, we would take naked, we, we would take hatchlings in, you know, got naked. Guy, yeah, we we would be playing naked. Uh, <laughs> oh, in our group. It's hot. It's the summer. <laughs> but we would hot. take hatchlings in guys who had just made accounts, and we would just usher them through. And as long as they had a good attitude and they weren't lazy in communication, like we, yeah, they, it was no problem. We would just walk them right through. The only time where things go sour when I'm playing with Ta is when usually it's somebody's tired and they get lazy with their communication and. You're almost guaranteed if you get lazy with your communication, you're almost guaranteed to get shot by another Ta member. Like it's gonna happen. Like yeah, I think right. that's just get how used, it get is. Used to friendly fire and everything. Yeah. Now. Well, it, re here recently we we have had a new crop of members. You know, so um, that's part of it. They're, they're still learning. They're still trying to do. Uh, you know, understand battle comms and you know, uh, be able to to relay the information consistently, you know, to remember every time to do it, you know, cause if, for example, Hey, who's, who's, uh, who's on South side with the, with the AK by one, by, or rather by barrels. Right. Um, you know, if, if no one responds, you're getting shot. Yep. Yep. S yeah. Straight up, you know, but we try to work with them, especially when they're new you know, but we tell them, look, you have you have to respond. Like you have to hard learned lessons, right? Yeah. You have to say uh, negative or yeah, that's me or something present or hubba bubba, whatever you want to say. But just give us some sort of acknowledgement that you hear us because if I describe what you're wearing, right, and I say you have this gun and you're on this side of the map at this specific place, you know. Unless you're having an out of body experience, I'm hoping that you know who you are, where you are, and what you have in your hands. Yeah, you know? I think that that's a good tip for new players too. Is maybe play. A lot of people don't know that you can play a uh, offline PVE mode and learn the map, learn the callouts, watch videos. That because communication is hu is I think by far the yeah, biggest part of friendly fire is succeeding just in a squad for sure. Um, but but to to kind of move it on though. Um, we talked a little bit. Uh, well, I'm really curious. As an emissary, are you getting emails from Nikita? Like, do you get that's something? The, okay, that's like, the question. That's well, what I'm curious about. Like, you're like, I'm, you're like, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm under NDA. Buddies. I'm under, uh, I'm under NDA. So I, there's, there's things I can't really talk <laughs> Which about. Which stands yeah. for Nikita. No, no, no. It's not. No, it's not like that. Um, I mean, we already have. You know, our, the the main community uh, support lead that, uh, which is Blackbird. And so pretty much, you know, we get everything we need, you know, when it's time to have it. And and I want to go back to the whole information situation so that I can clarify that. Um, I don't you guys weren't uh, you guys weren't around probably during this time, but there was the first stream of the game and it was done on um, I think it was done on YouTube. Uh, anyway, there, there were issues, right, with the game, with the build. Uh, the scabs weren't dying. They weren't taking damage from grenades, etc. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if it was Kiba or Nikita, but somebody was on the keyboard and they just, you know, smashed on the keyboard and cut the string. In anger? Yes. Oh. No. Because feel, that is the like, most Russian thing I've I, ever heard. I, I feel like as 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 unfortunate as that is, that is just a perfect Tarkov. That is yes. a perfect the first stream for are, Tarkov. Yeah, the scouts yeah. are such this a ain't sensitive. Fun. And if I remember fun, correctly, Tarkov he says Suka too, but but the thing is, but the thing is, but that's that see and then from that moment on they said they even announced they said that they weren't going to they were going to to keep a promise to not say anything to us until they knew for sure or were ready because they didn't want to the game to be represented wrong yeah. and they didn't want us to have our hopes built up on something and then it doesn't happen that's fair that's super you fair. know I, I feel like a lot of a lot of games mm -hmm. are too quick to make promises right. 
right. nowadays, and it's super respectable. But uh, I want to hear your thoughts. There's a uh, uh, on. So we talked about the game's already addicting as f- and fun as it is, but it's like I mean, it's like a a fiftieth of what this game is supposed to be. I mean, to think about Tarkov with a like the the type of story that they're talking about, like an in depth right. evolved story, and the open world aspect. I mean that those are huge. Like that's going to completely change this game, at, right. bo- both for the better. I mean, it's already an amazing game. W- w- what are you looking forward to um, as Tarkov continues to develop and these main feet? I, I mean, we're getting quests real soon, uh, right? And a lot of other stuff we saw in the Gamescom interviews. What are you looking forward to uh, uh, most in kind of maybe like a near gold version of Tarkov? Okay, well, the first thing I, I'd like to tell you is I do have a beginner guide for uh, beta. Yep. Uh, and and when you do the write-up on this, if you want to put the link to it, yeah, you I'll can. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. There's, Nation. Mm-hmm, there's also a, a, a print version of it that people can can look at as well as you can even copy the text and put it in a note in the game if you want to refer back to it. Right. Yeah, um, we have a beginner's guide too, but uh, in the first two minutes, I end up shooting my teammates. So you know, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is, and I bring that up because there, there's a certain thing first that has to be understood is that uh, a lot of people get into the game and they don't understand what the game will be they only know what the game is now and they judge it by that and they also compare it to other games by that same token right so i go over that a little bit in the video to kind of give a good understanding so with what's coming right the game at on on the release version is is what it is is a story mode right so when you go into the raid you're going to go in and you're not only are you going to be going in and doing quests and all that but you're also going to have things that you have to accomplish and you have to play through story in order to receive an exit like you won't really choose which exit only time that that may happen is if you find the key but you'll be labeled a, t- a runner. That's why we have the Tarkov runner tag mm-hmm. on the forums. You'll be labeled a runner if you if you leave early, right? So, or if you, yeah, because you would have to find the key first to get out. Okay, so, so it's think about be more that. More difficult to get out than it is right. right now. So think about that. When people are complaining and they've made so many threads about hatchets and and you know people running with hatchets and all that type of stuff, camping exits. You're not going to know which exit it's going to be unless you get the key, yeah, right? It's only getting harder. Right. Those and people then, aren't going to be too happy if they stick around. And then Nikita just said 80 to 100 hours minimum to complete all 10 maps. Oh, okay? wow. Yep. So yep. I saw that in the interview. That sounds it, awesome. And and the thing about it is that you're going to – okay, because you're going to be busy. You're going to have your quests. You're going to have your story. You know, um, they said that you can even complete – you will probably be able to complete – not probably, but he said you will be able to do this, the quest by yourself in, the, in your team or together as a team, right? Uh, so with that and the story, right, next comes the scavs. Now – People, like I said before, about the 180s and how wonky they can be, et cetera. Well, this is not AI from any other game that you played. They they are uh, not because they necessarily are trying to say we're going to try to do something that's never been done. They want the game to be a certain way, and because of that, they know that they have to make the AI, <clears throat> excuse me, super duper tough. Yep. But but human. In their playing, so that you like when it comes to player scabs, you can't tell whether it's a human or a scab, yeah. right? Like an AI or human, and they want to make them that smart and tactical and all these different things because when the release comes, each map get, is progressively harder than the next. So yeah. you're going to have to oh, go through. Awesome. <clears throat> right. And since and and then uh, what else in, is encompassed in that is the five man or whatever group, like the amount of the people that they allow in a group. So when you go full in a group, as it's meant to be in team play, right, you are going to have 
less people that are going to spawn in that are enemies, like PMC enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have the scavs. The scavs are really going to be your biggest enemy in the game. That's why they act the way they do. That's why they have to keep messing with them and tuning them. And every time you see a, a patch or something, they say, you know, fixed AI's vision at night or fixed, you know, something that was done incorrectly, et cetera, et cetera. That's why they say that because they're honing that, in. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to do that. You I know, think a great example of that <clears throat> is even <clears throat> last patch when the kind of AI super Twitch aimbot, no scope craziness was super common um, it was it, it, it was at the point where it's just like, I understand it's beta, but I'm not having fun while I'm playing this. But then when they patched it, I thought it was, uh, it's a testament to the devs that the way they um, kind of patched it is instead of the, the AI having the super aim, it's as their crosshairs are on you, their aim gets progressively better. It gets progressively more towards the head. So if you're just sitting there popping shots and you're missing, but you're just standing there, it's going to be a couple seconds before you're going to get headshot. But you still have that couple, like, but if you miss your first couple shots and you're like, oh shit, that was bad, and you get tagged in the arm or whatever, you fall back, that's a more realistic type of battle. And I feel like it's really shown, you know, with the very occasional, you still occasionally get that uh, kind of crazy shot. But for the most part, this latest patch, I thought was a big testament on the way the scavs are going. Because we, we want them to be difficult. We don't want them to be, or at least I don't want them to be, just cannon fodder, you know, just uh, these right. dumb loot bags. Yeah, loot bags. <clears throat> and I think it was a really smart decision. And I think it's a testament to, to, to the way the devs are thinking is they want, the, they want them to be strong, but they want them to be realistic. You know, they don't want them to be gods. Right, right. Um, I thought that was but a great But that's addition. the thing is they, okay, first of all, you, you haven't fought a, uh, <laughs> you haven't fought a scav gang boss yet. Okay. Nope. So when when you do, I don't even know what you that do, is, but it, it's it, but a, it, ooh, uh, it yes, it. they're they're the Hard they're the, rock. They're the, the gang leaders, basically. Oh, that's you know, awesome. uh, these guys are no joke. First of all, the scavs are going to be even Tony. harder. They're they're going to be even harder than they are now, and then the scav gang boss is going to be even harder than that. Yep. So that's why I'm saying <laughs> you're not going to. And they even said you, we do not expect you to complete. Uh, all 10 raids quickly. Yeah. It's going to take you some time, you know? So, and, and not to mention, you're going to have to go back. Like once you complete one, you're probably going to have to go back because you may have missed something for a quest or, or whatever, or you may need, you may have found a key in another map that you can own. Like currently you find the woods bunker key in customs. Yeah. Right. So you would have to Same go to customs key. Right, and get the key, and then you'd have to go back to Woods, you know, to go into that other room and see whatever it is that's supposed to be down there. And I think you know? the, the the MMO qualities really start coming out in this kind of stuff because we don't like like the MMO aspect of this game. There's not a lot of it right now, but when you when you hear Once about get where, where the directions quests, going, or this sounds or a lot like an MMO. And I know for us, survival and MMO are by far at least my favorite genre and FPS like mm. oh my god it's a good blend well, yeah. well, well think of it think of it as a sort of a nod to like to like the idea of man metro is such an awesome game if only i could play through it with friends yep yeah and that's that's sort of the idea that i see here uh so it's worlds apart from what people think it is. So when they try to compare it to PUBG or, you know, any of these other games, DayZ, it's it's not any of that, you know. Only because you see what you see now and because everything is loot-centric and it's a loot progression just because you're testing. So that's why when people say, well, I'm not having fun, you know, or, you know, this is, I'm supposed to be having fun playing this. No, because you're, you're not, you're not here to play the game. You're here to play test the game. You know, you're here to find out the flaws and, and, you know, let it be known and let's get it fixed. Not, not, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And this is where people falter with this. 
it's one thing to say this is a bug, this is a glitch that needs to be fixed. It's another thing to say, well, uh, you know, the scavs should do this or should do that, you know, or how about we have a mode, you know, uh, in the desert or something, you know, like they, they, uh, you know, let's have a mode like this that starts to sound like Siege or some game like that. It's like, no, that's, you didn't research yeah. the, the game. You, you're not, you don't know what it is. So that's why you're saying that because all you see is what we have in a test build because this is a true test. It's not like when people keep saying early access and all that, this is a true test. Right. It's not like before, though, when they used to pay people or bring them, you know, but have a, but it was a private like it was a private test and no one knew about it. You know, you just had people or they were part of the company. But this kind of test is like the truest one in the sense that it's for client server mechanics you know, and uh, bugs and things like that, like visual uh, sound and or whatever, you know, and giving you just a little bit of the, the the core, some of the core feature, like a slight little taste of it, you know, giving you guns, et cetera, another map and, and all that. Because if you wrangle all of that in first, then when it comes to introducing more maps and, and introducing the stories and all that other stuff, it's... It's it's not going to be anything. They just need to just implement it, you know, right. just put it in there because guess what? We know the game plays well and we know that it's doing what it's supposed to be. The RAM is optimized, you know, graphics are optimized, you know, uh, desync is, is not an issue anymore, you know, or whatever, or at least not very much. Um, I don't understand where people get the idea when it comes to desync uh, that it's supposed to disappear. Because it's yeah. never going to disappear. Well, I mean, know? they could work on it. I think it'll it'll get less and less. Every game ha at times has desync, but I I don't think the, this game it should go around the internet that this is a great game, but it has terrible desync. Well, you know? right, but see, but no one keeps talk. No one talks about uh, insurgencies, peer to peer, you know, teleport out of the game into the game, you know. Uh, you know, walk through the blackness, you know, for like three seconds before you're reconnected. You know, uh, no one talks about their AI, how they all pile through the door and they're relentless. You know, um, no one talks about the desync and all these other games that they're comparing it to, yeah. like yeah. like Daisy or PUBG or right. PUBG. I, I look at their forums, dude. So much fix the desync. And you know what they're saying? <laughs> they're saying the exact same thing that people, some people are saying here. Yeah. Why are you adding more content? You should be fixing the servers. Yeah, and it's different it, teams yeah. on, out there. So yeah. there's one team working on desync. There's another coming out with fresh content. But, but the right. thing with PUBG is, you know, uh, which is to Tarkov's credit again, is PUBG's already holding tournaments. Already like they're already uh, like like official, like e league type of stuff. It's like. If your game's but have not you played the done, have you played the recent PUBG? I haven't. If if it's but if it's done enough, if it, is it are they still saying they're an alpha? Because uh, yes, if the, if they, if they, they, are, they are, are, then it's just like I feel like you shouldn't hold an like a league type tournament because they had the PUBG Open or whatever. Right. They just until got you're yeah, the invitation. Right. Like, like like if you're doing that, you're claiming that your I, game I is good like, enough for I that. Think, I feel like we, we right. Kind of touch you on, are. You're, yeah. yeah. That's one thing that I really wanted to touch on that that uh, you and I talked about the other day that I really wanted to talk about this podcast is the integrity of Battle State in the way that they've stuck with the development phases. They kept it secret. They stuck to their alpha deadlines. They did. They did one year. They kept it tight. They opened it to beta. They've they've almost got like an old school model. They're not they're not opening it up to the public like so many other games have done and like kind of milked this whole alpha wave that these a lot of indie games are doing. I feel like they've had a, like a lot of integrity. but the difference the difference with well uh, hold on hearing, hold on can you can you just hold that thought one second because I just want to make a little correction to what he said um, no actually we had we were supposed to in November of 2016 be in in uh, in beta right so, so they fell behind they did yeah that. there's there's been a couple of missed dates right but and they and the alpha ended up becoming an extended alpha. Okay, and so people were upset about that. Um, but 
I believe but compared that to some because of the they were getting, obligation. they were trying to extend it because here's the thing. If you think about what's going on now, they were trying to extend it because they were about to try to update the engine. They were still doing tests on it. Okay. So they wanted to update the engine and they didn't want to, they wanted to start beta and update it then close beta, but they wanted to be to a point where they had, uh, I guess, development, a point in development so that when they started it, you know, they would have a lot of things probably to end up redoing, but they wouldn't have as many because they were far enough along. Yep. Do you understand what I mean? So I think they were giving themselves time. And of course, people complained, right? But the difference between that and these other games like you were saying they they're out promoting the games like as if you know Uh, citizen right as if it's as if it's a you know good to go you know like everything's great and they they show you everything like i mean they tell you everything they tell you oh we got you know uh this uh, dates that's gonna happen and so on and so forth they'll tell you everything you want to hear but they don't show you anything they don't show you a, a totally functional game you know, I kind of don't. Well, Daisy I kind is of notorious for that. I mean, they've right. such a huge fan base because it's always down the pipe. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. And I kind of like of leery about somebody who goes and creates a mod, then create go goes on to create a standalone game and then leaves it right and creates the H one Z one and then or you know yeah, works on that, right. then goes into PUBG and it's like, but you're doing the exact character design, character builds, you know, inventory systems, all this stuff is exactly the same. And you and, and it's like, how are you getting away with that? Yeah. You know? Well they and, say uh, <laughs> a great art is stolen, right? <laughs> well <laughs> that's true. That's flattery. true. Flat uh, imitation is greatest form of flattery. And that's true. But at the same time too though, you know, when you when you recycle yourself, that's that's a different, you know, you're not even a master yet. Yeah, there's you know, I mean, there's different ways of going about it. Yeah, I, I definitely. I mean, if you can, if the guy game hasn't game made a complete game play. yet, if he hasn't made a complete game yet, like why are people still giving you know putting money behind him? You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if in you if know? in a year from now, PUBG is still an alpha. It's, I mean, it, it, to be fair, like I think PUBG is the first game player knowns had real control over, so. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a shot. But if in a year from now it's, it hasn't moved out of alpha, some, something's weird with that. But, I mean, it is what it is. What are you uh, uh, pivoting here um, on Gamescom? So that's a big mm-hmm. hot topic in Tarkov right now. We had the, the couple, there was a, I saw a couple interviews. I'm not sure if there was more. Um, we saw some new stuff. Uh yeah, obviously the quest system is is a big one, but mm-hmm. the VTRs. Ideas. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, what, what, AKM, what AKM's ready to go. Yeah. AKM's ready to go. That's gonna be hot. Um, Heard the something VTRs, about an RPK yeah. too. Is that? I uh, no, I haven't heard anything about the RPK yet. All right, all right. There was a but don't don't worry. Rest assured, it's, it's gonna, gonna be in there. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be in there because I I like I'm telling you, it's just. From my experience, I, I, you know, you get a nose for things, and it's in Contract Wars, it's in Hired Ops, it's going to be in EMT. I just, yep. my my instincts tell me that. So, That'll be fun. You know, what yeah. Are you, what are your thoughts on those interviews? How do, how do you think, um, how do you think those <laughs> do as promotion? And here, you here you go. Inside? See, now I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you before. What's your motivation in the question? <laughs> But I already know the motivation. Okay, <laughs> I already know what you're what you're getting at. Uh, well, read me. Yeah. podcast. Read so, me. Let me tell you, I I'm a father of two, a 13 year old and 11 year old. I learned to 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 hear through the questions. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know what you're really telling me is you want a snack, but uh, you know it's not time for that right now. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I, I, uh, I think I don't. I think I'm. Uh, I think I think you're totally right. I think a lot of people will watch that and they they wanted a snack, but I I my well, I think my motivation is more of they're kind of they're out in the open more than they've mm-hmm. been. They're starting. I feel like they're starting to actually promote their game. Um, and I, I, yeah. I just, I just kind of want to, want to, my, my thing is, 
is how do you think it went? How do you think it was received? Are well, they doing the right tactic? Uh, let, let's just get let's get down to the real the real question is why would they get up there? They can't speak English that well. You know, why wouldn't they get someone else that could come up there and talk for them and, you know, so get why haven't they hired a PR person, et cetera, which they do have PR people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, but the thing is, it's their game, you know, I mean, you've got people that are like the, the people from Bohemia, you know, he could speak decent English, you know, and he might flub on some words here and there and, the thing about Nikita is he wants to speak for his, his game, you know, and then at first he was just doing interviews by himself. Now he's been bringing, you know, people with him, Pavel and, and then, you know, and so, so the evil eye a couple of <clears throat> times in those interviews. <laughs> so, but Definitely what they're doing, what they're doing is they, they, they're, you know, they're trying to learn how to do this, you know, to be able to speak up for their own game. And yep. and not and, and like I said, they they this is one that they tuck very close to the chest. You know, they care very much for the game. <clears throat> they don't want to let anyone influence them out of their vision, right? Because we've all seen how that works for a lot of the recent triple A games. You know, they start to the fans start to say this and say that. And so in the interest of trying to please them, they start you know, oh, well, we're going to do a community this or, you know, this is a community feature that, you know, what they wanted implemented and we're going to implement it, even if it doesn't make sense. Right. You know, so instead. Having have trust in them, you know, and so whenever they they come out and they speak about it, they're going to try to tell you the most they can. But you also have to remember Nikita struggling with not saying anything that is not ready to be said yet, you know? Mm -hmm. So not only is he struggling with English, you know, as far as like, he's trying to, to say, find the words to, to, to say, but also to not give away too much. Right. You know, that's fair. You know, yeah, I'm sure he's got a lot of things that he knows that, well, he, he obviously knows what's coming down the pipe. Right. It's like, you know, he doesn't want to let anything out until it's ready and polished enough to at least be released. Well, what do you, mm -hmm. what do you think about, um, all, all that aside, the actual things they announced, uh, anything that you're super stoked for, we're surprised that they added. I know there's like blind fire. Yeah, that's one of my, yeah, that's one of the things that I like. And then Nikita just said in an interview on clean stream that, um, it was a good idea to add blind grenades, yep. blind grenade throwing. Oh, yeah. like that's, that's gonna, they're gonna add it. And that was a definite answer. Yeah. So yeah, it was a definite yes. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the folding stocks. Um, and above all, honestly, from an emissary uh versus community side, not that I'm against them or versus them, but what I mean is like I guess there's a way to show them is the quest. Because I feel like the quest will give them more of an inkling as to what the game will be. Uh, before we get the story mode and all that. And the reason why we ha we won't be getting the story mode quite yet is because the script and everything is really under wraps. That's why people have been saying, well, because we're only getting like 30 quests, right? And people are like, well, these are just generic this and that. But if you understand that they're not trying to give away the story, then they're going to give you somewhat generic things to do. Yeah. They're not going to give you the other stuff because all of that would give away the story. Yep. Yeah, right. And that's sense. saved. <laughs> that's supposed to be for release. You know, you're supposed to, you know, not really. I don't I honestly, as much as I want to know things, I don't want to know because I want it to be a surprise to me. I'm already like in the midst of this test since day one and like seeing everything as it's going down. You know, it's not the same as for a brand new player who just buys it on release, you know, and then they get to experience everything for the first time and everything's working. Right. You know, everything's like in order and done, you know. Uh, so I, I want at least to be, you know, somewhat surprised. You know what I mean? Yeah, so right. um, but I'm also looking yeah, yeah. forward. Yeah. I'm looking forward to another aspect which will change the game is um, they didn't. I don't think it's going to be in this patch. But as far as like further down is the having to heal after a raid. Yeah. Uh I think that's awesome. Hideout. 
Uh, hey, that's going to be awesome. Man, that is going to be something else. I made a suggestion when they first announced it uh, to be able to like upload uh, our own pictures or make custom art and design or whatever and, and upload it <clears throat> to go with posters in the hideout. And that got a lot of rep and they really liked that idea, you know? So they put it as one of the questions about hideout, the Q and a for the hideout. And so they said that, that they're going to definitely uh, look into doing that. Oh, that's going to be cool. sweet. I got to cool. just touch back on one more thing about Gamescom. I know, I know it's an easy thing to laugh at, you know, especially for the gaming community like to see a team of guys go up there and kind of stumble over their english and like say a few goofy things but there's one thing that really stuck out to me i don't remember the exact wording but it was something along the <laughs> lines of takita he said something along the lines of oh i know what you're tarkov say. is about freeing yourself it was it was like post as a joke, but then he got real serious about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He was like, Tarkov I feel like it was a language like, barrier. It's about, see, the yeah, thing is, is, I, I thought yeah, it was a language it barrier to too. But he said to free. To believe, part of me wants to believe that there's like, and and I actually, I don't know, I kind of think, and I don't know, I thought you said something about this too, Twerk, and that they're actually taking the storyline like really seriously. Like they're serious about the writing, like. Right. They want so to have are, it. Russian novels. Like, they as want. A, they want to follow. Person, yeah. Yeah. Person, like he wants to escape from Tarkov. No. no but from, I mean, they yeah. want to follow. Okay. The let me let me explain. Crisis. Let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain it. They want to follow. Let me the explain it because like, the Russian novel here. I, I know. I, existential. I understand how they think, and I know. I know what he means when he says to free yourself. Right. He means. Um, and, and escaping from yourself and, and, and those things that he was saying, we play games and we watch movies for escapism, you yeah, know, right. to get to get away from ourselves, from our life, you know, from troubles and things like that. But then you also have to escape, like you have to escape from yourself. Like you're, you're going to have to make moral uh, choices, right? That's why team killing, spawn killing, you know, uh, camping, uh, extraction camping and all that. That's the reason why, like, even though they're going to institute karma, I honestly don't believe that they're going to make something that's like what people are thinking it is. It's just going to be a little more nuanced, I believe, but, um, to just kind of discourage, but you still have the option to do it. And one of the clues for me on that is that you have traders, but you also have flea market and auctions. So you don't have to get everything from the traders. Plus you're going to have a clan with a mutual clan stash. So if you're playing in the game together in, in the groups like you're supposed to, or like you should rather, um, <clears throat> then you should not have no problem getting gear. And you could essentially, if you wanted to be a clan who roams around strictly to just, you know, take out PMCs, you may be like, okay, we completed all 10 of the, the raids, right? So now what we're going to do is we're not even going to go free roam. We're going to try to get into matches and we're going to try to stop PMCs from completing quests and There'll things good like guys that. guys and bad guys that right. can naturally there develop. Moral and that's what I'm saying. So you can't, because in real life, right, there's no such thing as camping and extraction, you know, from the way that gamers look at it or spawn killing. You can kill. There's friendly fire. Well, one time we camped out you know, in front of a Best Buy for uh, a wee. In, in front of a Mervyn's. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. Long. You know, but that's the thing is that <laughs> it's, a, it's a legitimate thing. Like you're in a in a position where you need to make it out of there yeah or you or they may have gotten a clue that you like you went for it it wasn't there and you know that they probably have it that's why we have a documents folder you know because right. it can hold documents and maps and stuff they may have that and so they may have it they may not have been able to put it in their dark in their container right because they got a helmet in there and some other loot or whatever so you want to go and track them down to try to get that from them you know so that's what I'm saying. Like those types of tactics are not 
something that people should come into this game and say, oh, you can't do that. That's not good. Oh, I mean, it's you, part of the you game. Know, yeah. It's part of the game. I think and, if they stick to that, they'll be more successful because naysayers are always louder than the majority. Yeah. I think and most be, people who like it yeah. just don't ever say anything because they're busy playing the game. And right. As, they, as the devs, the you never listen to as them. As the devs step out there, like you said, this is their game. They're going to go out and they want to be the ones to represent their game because this is like this is their passion project. This is this is their baby. But at the same time, they don't speak great English and they're going to go out there and the game's going to get more popular and you're going to get the mainstream gaming community like laughing and making fun well, of that's them. That's why and they stuff. need to hire Twerkins but, as the PR guy. Yeah, yeah they got to hire yeah, they did. Twerkins for PR 2017. <laughs> But like they're gonna go know, out right? there, they're gonna go out there and they might like make fools of themselves a little bit. But the jokes on the trolls who make fun of them because these guys they know what they're doing. They have a they have a philosophy behind this game, and it has integrity. And I think it's a huge breath of fresh air because watching these guys go out there struggling with their English, trying to defend their game. Talking about how they're introducing like real existential moral crises yeah. into their game, <clears throat> it's, it's yeah. a breath of fresh air. It's sincere, and I don't it's think they made finally, fools of themselves. Yeah. I think that's. A, I, I think it was kind of funny the language barrier, but, like, but, but I, they, I, I they think they, they did a solid. Like they're they're they sincere. Did a solid job. They've built this game from the ground up. Like they, well, they you also have to. Out. You you also have to remember, man. Like these are Russians. Okay, and when I when I say that, what I mean is, they they have a real big connection to their community. Most of the community that came to the game first was Contract Wars community, right? And a lot of those were Russian. So for their people, they even did on on one of the streams not too long ago. Um, it was the uh, game. What is it? Name of that game spot, or I think, or one of those. They did a they did an interview and he asked to address if he could talk in Russian, right? So he's addressing his people, you know? And that's the thing that they're doing is they want, they don't want to go and just, because what we don't know, maybe the, the Russian community would look at that for them to have somebody that just speaks perfect English to come out and do all that. They feel like, oh, come on, man, this is your game. You should be out there representing and talking and speaking to people, et cetera, you know, or whatever. Um, I, we don't know that. I, I don't know cultural that. cultural reasons. Yeah, it could be, you know. I mean, they want to, uh, to you know, sometimes you have to do to learn, you know. So, I and mean, honestly, we don't know. Who, if, who wouldn't want to be? I he, mean, if you've created such a product, you want to be the face of your product, you know. And right. Not in a prideful way, but it's like in a good kind of pride. I don't yeah. even think. Yeah. Right. You like you're taking pride in what product. you're doing. As, I mean, of course, it's a product, but I don't. It's almost like it, it's their baby. It's like they're not thinking of it in business terms. Like it's like yeah, it's like they're showing off their painting. I think in that turn, they've been working on in for turn they'll years. be more successful. I think the developers, right. when you look at when they try to pander, those are the games that fall short. And they're clearly not not like movies, right games. Now. Whenever they pander, they fall short. The people, Notch or whatever, the people who make these games and they just make them exactly how they want to make them. Those are the games that do really well. And I, I think Tarkov, I think especially once the open world comes out, once the other stuff comes out, I think Tarkov is going to sell itself. I think despite what they wanted, I think this is going to be a really popular game. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. a lot of people want this. This is, I mean, we've wanted this. Yeah. We've, had, we've been having these conversations for 15 years of when, when are the games going to come out that we really want. And this exact kind of thing is, is like the game that we've described no. for I years. they're going to go the distance. Mm -hmm. Well, you know why that is? Because these guys are – how old are you guys? Uh, 30. 28. Yeah, right. Okay. So they're, they're at the age um, in their 30s where um, they grew up on 90s – on the 90s games, you know, uh, so they, that's what their thing, their passion is, is to bring back because during the nineties, there was a lot of original properties that came out then you, that's why you had the half-life and which I, I just barely starting to play, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, half-life and, and all those games. Cause yep. I, like I said, I was just, once I 
had that period of time where from 86 to 90 that I missed all of that, I had no real love or connection to video games like that, right? So I didn't have the nostalgia that people have because I didn't play all of the titles that came out in that time and then all the way through up until like 96, 97, right? So uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Like they have that they want to bring that back they want to they they want to make the game that they wanted to play when they were that age yep you know the more i learn too. about these devs the more the more i love them yeah i'm worried about them i'm just kidding no, I, I, <laughs> i'm stuck these guys i exactly exactly i think that's a, a good a good moment to to kind of start wrapping it up on but just the 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 old school kind of bringing back how it used to be when games were made not for because games didn't even have a chance to be major commercial successes right you know they were just they would be stoked if they had a hundred thousand right. players total or fifty thousand different times whatever now. and now when when you're trying to shoot for 10 million it's just like ah, oh, those are always the games that are just there's too many compromises and this these devs They're i think are going to make the a game yeah it's right. that yeah. game we've been these waiting guys, forever for these guys are sincere yep. yeah well, as we wrap up here, uh, Colonel Torkins, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can check me out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash the Broham Nation, uh, T H E, and uh, Twitter at the Broham Nation, and um, maybe Facebook too, <laughs> Broham Nation. And uh, catch me in Tarkov or on the forums. You know, um, check out all my videos. I got guides. I got. You know, gameplay. I've got all kinds of stuff. You know, there that's you great. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Oh, I appreciate you guys having me. I really do because um, it was a great opportunity for me to like really be able to voice uh, the devs' outlook and direction of the game, and you know, give some some history and understanding so that uh, you know, hopefully, you'll get one of these new. Uh, players that's excited to play the game that can know what the game really is yeah. or what it will be rather and they don't go in with any sort of preconceived notion or expectations and then you know they won't be they won't feel like you know some people will say that they're being gypped or whatever but right you know you gave an honest yeah. insight into what the game is you're gonna so. be on on saturday uh twerkins you gonna be play, playing some tarkov saturday yeah i'll be playing yep all right